Everybody got very quiet. <laughs> yes, um, I think we're still waiting for a couple more committee members. Um, so we'll <clears throat> wait till they join. We still do have some time. And then we are waiting for one staff person who's having some technical issues. So um, I will keep you all updated. You have a great view behind you. Yes, I wish it was my actual view behind me, but um, yeah, our communications team made these very nice backgrounds that we can use in our um, meetings. I think they were trying to communicate to us. We don't want to see. Yeah. I don't want to see your junk anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, Zoom doesn't let you do the blur, does it? I, I believe it does. Oh. Um, I think it's in your settings. Okay. okay. Let me see if I can figure that out with you. Where? I'm not, yeah. Um, I guess I'm not seeing it. You. Hmm. Oh, choose virtual background. Let's see. Where did um, you find that? If you click the little arrow to the right of stop video that comes up oh but, virtual well, there you go but i don't have an once i go there i'm not sure what has to happen hmm i'll just stick to what i've got yeah the real deal Um, yeah, I don't see that. I'm not seeing it either. I also went to um, video filters mm. and there is none. Okay, no worries. It's not a problem. I was just curious. You think they would all have that? It must, you must yeah. be able to do it some way, but. I think a lot of what you can do with Zoom is browser dependent. Oh. And uh, sometimes I know my system isn't uh, exactly 21st and a half century, so I'm mm -hmm. I'm struggling sometimes with what uh, what I can do and what what can't be done. I see you got a headset though. These things are a, like <laughs> yeah. they make such a big difference. I was working off the earbuds for a long time, and it was just it's just not as good. I thought about getting a, a microphone and, and a speaker. Uh, but you know, I've got an old computer here. It's going to take an analog plug and who yeah. knows who's going to be s selling any equipment like that. And then I think, the, I think some of the feedback we get comes from that, you know, you get yeah, I think so too, but you so sound really mics, clear. You sound really clear with that. Well, that's good. This is at least 10 years old, this, this headset thing. And it looks a little clunky, but it does work. Yes, <laughs> Looks like we're almost all here. I think we're just waiting for Chair O'Neill and then should be ready. Okay. Just so um, in case you're not aware, they're on the top bar um, where all the pictures are, you can see the one that has the presentation. Mm -hmm. If you hover over that and click the three dots, you're able to pin it, and that'll give you a full screen of the presentation. Where it says view? Yeah, so if you hover over the, on the top bar, like where your everyone's pictures are at, if you hover over oh, uh, oh, the oh. presentation, you'll see those three dots. If you yes. click the three dots, it allows you to pin it. And how do I get back to this view? after that. 
Which which view are you in? Are you in gallery view or speaker view? Yeah. Um, I would go to speaker view. And then you'll see everyone else's faces on the, the top bar. Okay, yeah. Well, actually, um, on my photo, there is a mute and then there's three little buttons. Yes. Three dots, excuse me. Yes. So if you click the three little dots and you add pin, it'll let you pin it, which will enlarge the presentation. Okay. Does that make sense? I'm yeah, hoping that's yeah. making sense to everybody. Yeah, that <laughs> works. And then, and then in the top left, if you want to unpin it, there's a little unpin, Dina. Correct. Yeah. Right. That's what I was wondering. Oh, yeah. okay. So Thank I have you, a large view over to the, on the left-hand side, there's an unpin. Yeah, it'll say unpin, but then you'll have to click gallery view too, if you want to get back to the, the way you had it before. So okay. unpin and then gallery view. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We are still waiting on Chair O'Neill. I'm gonna reach out to her, see if she's having any technical issues.
Anna, should I assume that there haven't been any um, applications for the vacancy? Not that we've heard of yet. Okay. Committee member Houston. You're stuck with us. Yeah, I've been telling <laughs> people not to apply and no, I'm just kidding. I haven't been doing that. <laughs> Hello. I um, have a, a bad computer microphone, so I'm on my, I had to switch to my phone for audio and then computer for video, so I'm on like three devices now, so sorry uh -oh. about that, everyone. No worries. Yeah. <clears throat> I haven't ordered a new, uh, I would have to order a new uh, headset or something for the laptop, but anyway. Thank you for making it work. We're, we're good to go. We're good to go. <laughs> Let me just check. Thank you, Chair O'Neill. I know we were waiting for one staff member to join as well as she was having issues. Um, okay. And um, we'll just give us one moment. I think we are all set on on our side, uh, Chair O'Neill, uh, if the committee is ready. Okay, great. Um, I think we are ready then to begin. Um, good evening and welcome to the Thursday, January 21st regular meeting of the Historic Preservation Committee. Um, uh, Netta, do we need any instructions to the public on public comment or anything before we we formally begin? Uh, Chair O'Neill, no, we don't. Since we've changed public comment, we've all, we already know everyone who is speaking tonight. Okay, great. Just, just I know we changed platforms too, so yeah. Yes. Um, from WebEx, so I just wanted, I wasn't sure. Okay, um, Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll then? Uh, Chair O'Neill, I'll also be clerking the meeting tonight, so that'll be me. Oh. I am I am doing okay, all great. things See, that's tonight. That's what happens when you're late. You miss, you miss <laughs> all the announcements when you're late. No, that's Please okay. Call roll. Uh, thank you, Chair O'Neill. Uh, Chair O'Neill? Here. Uh, Vice Chair Houston? Here. Committee Member Mercer? Here. Committee Member Mueller? Here. Committee Member Purzell? Here. Thank you. <clears throat> Great. Uh, so next is public communication. This is time we set aside for public communication to talk about any item that is not on tonight's agenda. Is there anyone who would like to speak to us on any item not on the agenda? There are no members of the public who'd like to speak on uh, anything not related to the agenda. Okay, great. So we can move into new business, item number one. Um, election of Historic Preservation Committee Chair and Vice Chair for 2021. <clears throat> so I have a little cheat sheet on how this will run, but I believe the first thing is that we open up to the rest of the committee for nominations for the position. I would like to nominate oh, you again, Chair O'Neill. I second. <laughs> I agree. Well, I need think... a second, but but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is always what happens when you're late. 
But I, I would so want to say that I think our leadership and uh, and how we've operated so far has been outstanding. I, I wouldn't wish for anyone else. Thank you very much. Okay, I guess we don't need second, but what we do need is a motion to close the nominations for chair. So would somebody like to make that motion? I, I will make a motion to close the nominations for chair. Okay. <clears throat> Great, thank you. My instructions are the chair calls a vote of each nominated member for chair in the same sequence. The nominations were received, so we have one. Um, and I guess that's all we have to do. So I guess the first thing to do is to vote on this and then we'll move into vice chair. Is that correct? Staff can help me. That is correct. And I'm, I'm happy okay, to call. Thank you. Okay, Chair thank you very much. Yes. Uh, Vice Chair Houston? Yes. Committee Member Mercer? Yes. Committee Member Mueller? Yes. Committee Member Prezell? Yes. That motion carries 5 0. Okay. So I think we just repeat the process for Vice Chair. Um, so we will first open up for nominations for the Vice Chair position. I would like to nominate Member Purzell, um, just in case uh, Member Houston, somebody comes along and wants your position. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a great idea. Do we have any other nominations? Okay, seeing none, I, uh, I'll make a motion that we close the nominations for Vice Chair. Second. And Okay, and then now we can have a vote. Chair O'Neill? Yes. Vice Chair Houston? Yes. Committee Member Mercer? Yes. Committee Member Mueller? Yes. Committee Member Prezell? Yes. Okay, that motion carries 5-0, and so... Um, you are now Vice Chair uh, Prezell. <laughs> Chair, Chair O'Neill, you are going to continue in your role this evening as Chair. Great. Let's keep going then. Um, thanks everybody for making it short and sweet. Um, uh, next we have our consent calendar. We have one item on consent. It's approval of the Historic Preservation Committee December 2nd, 2020 meeting minutes. Um, do we have any comments on the minutes? Hold on one second, I have to jump screen. Does anyone have any comments or questions on the minutes? I had a few corrections. I think they are. Um, I'm trying. It's on page three, and um, the following feedback and comments. And it was sort of hard to remember exactly because our, our discussion ranged all over the place, and I'm sure it was hard to capture. Um, and I'd like for you guys to um, weigh in if you think that these corrections are appropriate. So uh, the Historic Committee and Preservation Committee uh, provided the following feedback and comments. Um, first, would like to ensure the city's historic, I would say historic landmark criteria and the Secretary of the Interior standards are, I would say followed. Yeah, I would agree. And we have no issue making that, that adjustment. Okay. And then the second one, um, I don't know whether the word weather should be inserted. Would like to know whether recommendations made on historic project projects are preserved um, or whether it's okay the way it reads currently. No, I agree there's something off there. Um, <clears throat> right, right. Uh, it's almost more like, you know, what about would that? like to be informed of. Uh, would like to know that recommendations made on historic are made. That. Or if. Yeah, I'm wondering. If, yeah, yeah, that's the thing, if. Um, I'm wondering if it's the intent is 
of, of that discussion was like trying to remember if it was, um, you know, that we will committee would like to be informed, you know, of the outcome of projects that are not going through the regular process. I think that was the intention, right? That was, that was the um, intention. Yeah. So it's sort of like would like to know. Yeah, I think weather is probably the right word. Whether recommendations on historic projects provided by the committee are, I don't even know if preserved is the right word, but um, are adopted, yeah. incorporated, yeah. 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 finding. Adopted, I think, yeah. So I'd like to know whether recommendations made on historic projects are adopted, you know, in the final approval. I think that's what our intention is there. Intention yeah. was okay. there. We can change okay. it to would like to know whether recommendations made on historic projects are adopted. Yeah, because we kind of just okay. <clears throat> lose connection otherwise. And then was there anything else? Um, committee member Houston? Okay. Um, the, the last one, the second line, control on projects or situations, um, needs an S on situation, that's minor. Yeah. Unless anybody else has anything. Um, it probably should be situations where historical, potentially historic pro properties are involved rather than were involved as well so they're just that's just some group they're not content just a couple grammar things on the last bullet point okay okay do we have any other uh comments on the minutes or otherwise we can have a motion to approve as um revised okay um i'll move that we approve the minutes as revised on the record tonight i'll second Okay, can we have a vote? Chair O'Neill? Yes. <clears throat> vice Chair Houston? I'm not the Vice Chair. Oh, I apologize. <laughs> vice Chair Grizel. Yes. <laughs> Committee Member Houston? Yes. Committee Member Mercer? Yes. Committee Member Mueller? Yes. That motion is 5 0. Could I ask a question? Um, Typically, uh, the rule order or the or the call for uh, votes uh, is done in reverse order, ending with the chairman. And the purpose yeah. for that is that the chairman can break any tie that might occur. You're correct, committee member Mueller. I will reverse my order. <laughs> no, you're definitely correct. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, hopefully we won't have to break any ties, but thank you for bringing that up this evening. Um, okay, so minutes, we are gonna move on to our formal items. <clears throat> Item number three is project 1-4665, Historic Resources Assessment of the Property located at 1691, 1691 East Main Street. Okay, um, the committee members have any ex parte communications regarding this project? Um, I don't have any ex parte communication, but I may have to recuse myself. I'm not 100% positive if Andy could confirm. I work for the firm that prepared the study, but I did not work on the study or was not part of the study in any way. Um, so your firm prepared the study? Yes. That's correct? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I would probably recuse myself. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So does she just have to go in a waiting, a virtual waiting room now? <laughs> okay. Yes, we, we will move her. I'm gonna let the clerk know to move Vice Chair Purzell, if we could just have one moment. Will I still be able to view, like view everything or will I be like cut off? <laughs> You'll, you'll be in exile. Uh, you, you won't be able to view it in Zoom, but if you would like to still participate or watch it, you can go onto the YouTube platform and, or watch it or on the city website. It okay. just in so the Zoom meeting. When you guys get to the second item, will I be automatically brought back in? Yes, the, the clerk yeah. will bring you back in and we won't begin until you're back into the meeting. Okay, thank you. Yeah. 
you know, Zoom has a handy waiting room feature or like different rooms you can put people in for everybody's information. So we can, as long as we don't forget, we bring her back in. <laughs> we will remember. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, do we have any other uh, ex parte communications from any other members? I, um, I'm not seeing any. So I think we have a report from staff next. Yes. Thank you, Chair O'Neill. This is a request for a historic resource assessment for two structures located at 1691 East Main Street. Um, this project has not been modified by the director under the emergency ordinance in response to COVID-19. If we were not in the emergency ordinance, this project would still be reviewed at the HPC level. Slide. For context, we have a vicinity map. On the left-hand side, you can see the red box identifying the project location. It is located on the corner of East Main Street and Live Oak Drive. In the left-hand corner of the screen, you can see Memorial Park. For reference, the site is located east of Memorial Park and across the street from a preschool and Ventura Catholic school, a Christian school. Um, on the right hand side of the screen, you can see a zoomed in aerial view of the project site. There are two buildings located on site. The project originally came in as a request to demolish building two and to apply facade modifications to building one. Um, because both structures are over 40 years old, we sent out a five day posting for the request on February 10th, 2020. The HPC did have two or more members request to review the project um, in further detail. Following the request, the applicants have um, prepared a phase one through an outside consultant hired by the city that has been shared with the Historic Preservation Committee via a second five-day posting on October 28th, 2020. At that time, there were two or more members that requested to review the phase one report at a public hearing. So tonight you are um, reviewing the historic significance of the structures. We are not reviewing the proposed demolition or facade modifications at time. At this time, just the determination of the phase one and whether or not the Historic Preservation Committee agrees or disagrees with the recommendation. Slide. These are the historic resource criteria that are used to identify if a structure or structures are significant, historically significant to a city. The phase one report did identify that one of the structures meets criterion D, embodying the distinctive characteristics of a type, period, or method of construction. Building two was not identified as meeting any of the listed criterion. Slide. This is building one, it fronts East Main Street. The structure was constructed in 1939 and it embodies the streamlined, modern and minimal traditional style as identified by the phase one report because it has a compact one-story massing, a hipped roof, lack of ornamentation, smooth stucco exterior, curved exterior surfaces, including rear corners, the porch overhangs, front stairs, um, broadly overhanging eaves, steel casement windows, and it is set back from the public right of way. So this is the building that the phase one report identified as meeting the criterion listed in the historic resources criteria because of the character defining features that you see listed here. Staff does agree with this recommendation. Slide. This is building two. It is set back behind building one and fronts Live Oak Drive. The phase one, or the, excuse me, the structure was constructed between 1952 and 1958, but we do not have um, an exact year that this building was constructed. The phase one report has identified that building two matches building one, but it lacks any specific architectural style references and has no discernible architectural style. So it is not being recommended for historic significance at this time. Slide. Staff recommends that the Historic Preservation Committee, back one slide, please, determine that building one is historically significant and that building two is not historically significant. So tonight, if we determine that 
either structure on site is historically significant, the applicant team will move forward with historic preservation design review. That means that the proposed facade modifications and demolition of the rear structure will come back to the Historic Preservation Committee for review. If it is determined that the HPC does not agree with the phase one and does not think that either structure is significant to the city, then the applicant team will move forward with formal design review by the design review committee. So either way, the applicant team's next step will be to attend public hearing to have the proposed modifications reviewed and approved um, by a committee. If anybody has any questions about that, I can answer them for you. That concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. Okay, great, thank you. So um, as staff mentioned, the next um, uh, order of our procedures is to ask if there's any questions of staff, not discussion, but any questions of staff. So does anyone have questions of staff at this time? I'm not seeing any hands raised. Um, I, I do have a question or so there is an error in the staff report in terms of what criterion is listed. Um, so if this, this uh, does, does any you know, decision we make tonight turn into some sort of statement of official action or finding that we would need to correct that at some point during the hearing um, or no? Chair O'Neill, are you looking for us to weigh in on that? I, I think if there's yeah, a correction like, on the criterion, that you would just include that in your motion. Okay, that, I just wanted to know when it was the appropriate time. Then I will wait to bring it up in discussion. Um, do we have any members of the public who would like to speak on the item? Chair O'Neill, we do have one member of the public who has registered to, to speak on this item. Okay. That is Kathleen um, Manos. Ms. Manos, you're able to speak now. Um, if you can unmute yourself, you'll be given three minutes for public comment. Ms. Manos, are you able to hear us? So we're not getting a response from Ms. Manos. Um, Chair O'Neill, if you're okay, we'll try to continue to work with her. And if uh, we're able to get her back on, or would you be willing to entertain public comment later in the discussion? Yeah, given the I'm, I'm yeah. here. Oh, oh, there we go. Thank you, Miss Manos. I'm, I'm here. Oh, uh, Miss Manos, you can uh, you have three minutes. If you'd like to provide your public comment at this time. Okay. Am I on? <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, you are. We can hear you. Okay. My uh, main, uh, one of the main criteria that I chose to speak on was the fact that um, this was, first of all, I got a card nine days ago about this. And when I spoke with my neighbors about it um, on the same street, but more than 300 feet away, they had not heard anything about it. And we're all in the historical uh, Hobson Heights historical area. And so I think that the outreach to Hobson Heights should have been much more than 300 feet, because as you know, Hobson Heights is certainly entail a bigger area than that. The other thing was that it was done so quickly. And so we kind of tried to tell as many people on uh, Sunday, which, you know, being the nature of, COVID and all that stuff, it's not an easy task. And so that number one, number two, it may seem, you know, like the building, two buildings there, the way it was said, it was a commercial building. Yes, it, obviously they were homes at one time and they applied to get commercial um, status. And 
the point is to change a home, regardless of whether it's um, 1952 or 1939, which is the front, the, uh, front building, is still a lot more um, attractive than a parking lot. And it, it's basically the entrance to the entire Hobson Height area. And I'm sure being on the Historical Preservation Committee, you're aware of what Hobson Heights means to Ventura. It was one of the, if not the first um, residential that uh, underground sewers and the light street as a planned um, significant uh, place to live in Ventura in terms of uh, the whole planning of it and et cetera. So um, I think number one, it should be any final decisions or further uh, comment on this should be extended and include more than just 300 feet from the actual um, project. And I know people on that street are very concerned about it as well. I have friends on that street and um, being the nature of the Zoom, one of them couldn't even figure out how to get on. And so it's, you know, and that my whole problem too is I'm not looking at anyone but my name on the screen right now. So I don't know who I'm talking to really. But I would ask that this be uh, something that was more Ms. publicized. Hales, you're, yes. You've reached your th three minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's so okay. It, may... it just, it just, the timer just went off. Just, oh. just finish up, oh. finish up your statement. And yeah. Okay. Go well, ahead. I, I uh, yeah, I forgot about the timer. Uh, so um, basically, I just think it should be extended to more than 300 feet, and there should be an extension on the time limit to make any decisions on that because we all feel very strongly about that here in Hobson Heights. Okay. Thank you. Right. Um, does staff want to? Um, uh, just clarify the noticing requirements or or that noticing would happen again at the next step when there is a design review by either body. Can you clarify what would happen at the next phase for the next meeting, whether it's this one or DRB where it would be heard? Sure, happy to, Chair O'Neill. Um, the municipal code does not require noticing for this item, but um, to, to further engage the community, we did send out notices to 300 foot radius of the site. Um, if it is determined tonight that this is historic or whether it is historic or not, the next steps for any modifications to the buildings would require another public hearing, uh, either at the DRC or here again at the HPC. That again would be noticed. Uh, we would notice it to uh, members of the public uh, within 300 foot radius. We also place all of the projects, including this one, on our development map for the public to be able to access uh, once applications are received. So we do try to notify as soon as an application is received, when it's scheduled for a hearing, and then when there is action taken on it. Um, if Ms. Ms. Manos and her neighbors are uh, interested, we're happy to uh, continue to communicate with her and let her know when applications are received so they are able to provide input very early on. Um. If I may speak, uh, I'm representing the applicant. Will I be afforded an opportunity to uh, address the item? Uh, uh, Mr. White, you, you will have 10 minutes um, to also uh, provide comment or add on to the presentation, yes. Right. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I, um, was not aware of informed that the applicant uh, or representative of the applicant was here. So um, if we have no other public comment, um, we'd be happy to hear from you. All right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, good evening. My name is Troy White. I'm a principal planner with TW Land Planning and Development. I live locally and my office is located here in downtown near the Rubicon Theater. I'm the agent for the property owner and applicant, Dr. Jay Ross. I'd like to offer a little background for your consideration and then to make an important request of you. As you've learned from living in town and or reviewing the Rencon report, the project site is the location of a former dentist office. The property has sat vacant for a number of years until Dr. Jay Ross purchased the property in January of 2020. In advance of his purchase and through the first building safety plan check, no due diligence on the part of Dr. Ross or his design team revealed that the buildings and or the property would be considered potentially historic. 
The delay and cost associated with this process have been heart-wrenching for Dr. Ross. His business, already under stress through the COVID-19 pandemic, was not prepared for a one-year permitting delay, nor the thousands of dollars of unforeseen permitting costs. My client is not a developer and is simply trying to perform a minor exterior remodel so that he can move his dentistry business to this location. Dr. Ross has expressed willingness to work with city staff to address any aesthetic issues, concerns associated with the minor remodel of building one. No demolition of building one is proposed and all of the character defining features of building one will be retained, including the smooth stucco, the rounded corners, the lack of building ornamentation, the rounded stairs, the rounded corner on the building use, the compact one-story massing and hipped roof, the steel casement windows, and setbacks from the public right-of-way. While we believe Building 1 is architecturally interesting, we question whether the building rises to the level of being historically significant. The property is not associated with any historic events or important persons, nor the work of a master in either design or workmanship. It is unclear if it's unique or rare uh, within the city, uh, the state, or the nation. Dr. Moss's, Dr. Ross's minor remodel will substantially improve a property that has sat vacant for years while retaining the key architectural features. In conclusion, we respectfully ask that the HPC determine that the 1939 commercial building, Building 1, is not historically significant and that the 1952-1958 commercial building Building two is not historically significant. Thank you so much for your time. Both myself and the architect, Warren Hamrick, are online and available for questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, does anyone on the committee have any questions of the applicant before we close the public hearing? I'm not seeing any particular questions at this time, although if they do come up, we can reopen it and, and hear from you. So thank you very much. Okay. Um, uh, there's no other, I don't believe there's any other requests to speak. So therefore we will close the public hearing and then begin deliberation. Um, okay. All right, so let's begin. Um, would anybody like to, start off on this item with their impressions. Uh, committee, mem committee member Muller, please. Well, thank you. Um, I, I was going to ask Ms. Manos, uh, but I think maybe it's the consensus that uh, the neighbors and that neighborhood uh, is in favor of having this property uh, be uh, designated as an historical uh, property. And uh, I got the feeling that the, the neighborhood there was very much in favor of it. Um, so um, I guess uh, the only other observation I had was I tried to find another historical landmark in Ventura of that era and of that style. And there's only one on the list, it's, it's a restaurant now uh, and so it seems as though uh, buildings of the, that era, the mid war year, between the war years, uh, the late 30s, uh, and that style are are just uh, kind of thin on the ground. And so I think you know, as a historical resource, uh, its its particular style and and time of being built is of interest to us. Thank you. Um, I, I agree. I think there was a point made in the um, consultant's report about the lack of building in Ventura for a significant number of years, with this being one of the exceptions. Um, committee member Mercer? Uh, you're on mute. Okay. Thank you. Um, Yes, I, I love that the um, applicant wants to retain the original distinctive features. And I think that um, 
this possibly could qualify as um, embodying distinctive characteristics, you know, of a period. It's um, it, it's quite unique. Thank you. Remember Houston? Um, I would agree with the consultant's report and that the uh, building one does uh, meet the criteria or the criterion um, for historic significance um, and that building two does not. I think to clarify for Ms. Manos, the, the report that we um, were given by Rincon says that the building was built as a dentist office. So it was originally a commercial building, not a house, even though it looks like a house. And it probably relates more to the Main Street corridor than it does to the Hobson Heights neighborhood, which unfortunately at this time, I don't believe is uh, a landmark district, but hopefully will be considered as one uh, by the ongoing survey. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I would. I wanted to make that clarification too. It appears the building was built originally as a dental or medical office building of some kind, not a residence, and converted. Um, I I agree with the rest of the committee members who have spoken um, that building one. Since I, I would say it has you know architectural significance, um, although possibly also historical significance if you think about the you know lack of a lot of examples of other buildings developed at the, from the period particular period and that building two does not have any merit um, in line with the staff report. However, the staff report makes a statement that the building appears eligible for listing on the National Register of Historic Places under Criterion D. National Register of Historic Places Criterion D is for archaeology, um, so that's kind of a major, it, typically, um, uh, it's not embodying the distinctive characteristics of a type period or method of construction, that's Criterion C. So that's kind of a big, um, a big error we would want corrected in any findings we make tonight. And I actually would go a step further, and I would say that I'm not so sure it does qualify for the National Register. I definitely think it, that Building One qualifies as a Ventura landmark under under that criterion D. So I think there just got to be um, a switch of programs accidentally in the staff report. Uh, Ventura landmark D is embodying type period method of construction. So um, I just want everybody to be aware of that. It's on page two, right next to the picture. So we would need to, to clarify that. And then it'd be California Register of Historical Resources, um, Criterion 3. So um, it's sort of a minor thing. I think either way, we end up with one building being a, his a historical resource uh, uh, under CEQA, whether under what program is designated or appears eligible under is kind of neither here nor there. But I did want to take a minute to um, clarify for Mr. White that um, it sounded like from staff's explanation, and they can clarify if I'm wrong, that regardless of the action of this committee, another um, committee will have to see this either way. It either has to go to design review or historic preservation committee. Is that correct? That is correct, Sharon. So there's actually, so in this case, at the point we're at, there's actually no um this doesn't add at this point we're not we're not adding any steps the steps have already been added <laughs> to this point um and so you would you would not go to two committees you would just go to one committee either way so i guess the good news is regardless of the outcome of a vote you have to go to a board either way so you know it's not actually adding anything else at this time just for clarification but I am sorry that it's taken a year to get here. Um, if we, okay. So it sounds like we have some consensus on building one and building two in terms of the simplest, you know, the simple finding of, you know, this, and let me just, I just want to reread the staff report exact recommendation, or maybe if, if, it, if it's up on screen. Um, determined that the 1939 commercial building, building one is historically significant and the 1952-58 commercial building, building two is not historically significant. Um, I think those are broad enough statements that we could just make those findings, but I do want it in the record that the, the error of the wrong criterion is cited in the staff report. Um, does staff have any recommendations for handling that or 
Yes, Chair O'Neill, if uh, we can make that clarification with that motion. So if the motion is okay. to uh, follow staff recommendation, I would just um, ask that the motion also include the clarification to the criteria. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, well, since I'm trying to make the clarification, I guess I can formulate a motion and we can see if there's a second and a vote. So my motion would be um, to determine the 1939 commercial building, building one is historically significant under Ventura landmark criterion four and that the 19, no, criterion D, sorry. It's Ventura D and California register three, but the motion is 1939 commercial building, building one is historically significant under Ventura landmark criterion D. Okay. <laughs> 1952 to 58 commercial building building two is not historically significant under any criteria. Um, that's my motion. So if we have a second, we can have a vote or we can have more discussion on the motion or a second replacement motion. A second. Okay, I think it was seconded by committee member Houston. If we have any further discussion, please raise your hand so I know you want to discuss it further. And seeing none, we can have a vote. Thank you. Committee member Mueller. Committee member Mueller. I'm sorry, I keep forgetting to unmute. Uh, I vote yes. Committee member Mercer? Yes. Committee member Houston? Yes. Uh, Chair O'Neill? Yes. And that motion carries okay, thank you. 4 1 with uh, Vice Chair Prezel recused. Great. Thank you. Um, if we could bring her back into the meeting prior to starting item number four, that would be great. Thank you yes. so much. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Thank you. I just take one moment to give the clerk's office a moment. Uh, the applicant team on uh, this item is very large. So if we could just have a moment to bring them all in as they will also be doing a presentation. Looks like we have everyone here. Right. Here deal. Okay, well, we will continue with the meeting then. Um, moving on to item number four, project 14889, Pierpont Inn, historic landmark number eight, conceptual design study located at uh, 550 San. I never know how to say this because I'm not a renter and native. Can somebody tell me is it San Hon or San John Road? San, San Hon. <laughs> okay, that's what I thought, but then. <laughs> You never know. Now you're a native. Um, now I did not want to say it wrong and then be shunned forever. <laughs> so it's better to ask. Definitely. Okay. Um, <laughs> do we have, do any of the committee members uh, have any ex parte communications regarding this project? Okay. Oh, committee member Houston is raising her hand. I actually did have um, an ex parte communication from. Um, <laughs> Tyson Klein, um, just asking me how he thought I, uh, they should, the applicant should proceed with the city on this. Okay. I'm not seeing anyone else raising their hand as I scroll. So I think that seems like our only ex parte communication from the committee. I have none. Uh, do we have a staff presentation on this? Is it really just a discussion item or? Um, are we going into the presentation from the applicant? Thank you, Chair Neal. We do have a, a brief staff presentation just at the beginning to um, set the scene, and then we are going to be turning it over to uh, the applicant team. Okay. All right, let's have the presentation. Thank you, Chair O'Neill.
Jared, we are, you're cutting in and out. Uh, I'm not sure if the rest of the committee is experiencing that. Yes. I can, hoping, am I still cutting out a little bit? Yeah. Yes, you are, Jared. We're not hearing you at all at this point. I think he is communicating to us that he's going to change his headset. <laughs> Getting very good at reading Zoom meetings now. <laughs> it's a different language. Apologize, everybody. I like this. Am I can be heard now? We yeah. can hear you better now. Yes. Better. I'll lean in too. Um, thank you, Chair O'Neill, members of the H. Jared Rosengren, principal planner. New ownership of the Pier Pond Inn has asked for the opportunity to come and present to your community, uh, committee a conceptual design presentation and to have a collaborative discussion about the ideas for branding and improvements to the property. The city has been working with prior ownership of the Pier Pond Inn for the past five years, uh, which included several HPC hearings. And that has resulted in, in what ends up being basically some repair work. So the applicant and staff is, acknowledges that, that all parties have had a role in the past discussions not going as smoothly as it could have when attempting to deal with some of the issues that have arisen. Um, but we're all seeing this as a new opportunity to take a fresh look and a, take a fresh approach on how the property can be improved. I can't see it very well. So is it, are we on the next slide? Yes. Um, we are, Jared. Okay. Located on the east side of San Juan Road, the Pierpont Inn is situated between the downtown and midtown communities north of Highway 101. Next slide. Next. Okay. Can I have the one after that? Jared, why did I just jump in since we're having some issues? I, I apologize, everyone. Um, just to give you some co context and background, Dar, if we could just go to the next slide. Um, I'm, I'm going to hand it over to the architect team. What we were, what staff was trying to queue up for the HPC is um, the the Pierpont Inns come under new ownership as well as hired a new uh, architectural firm and consultant team to assist them in um, some design improvements to the Pierpont Inn. And uh, in discussions with staff, we've encouraged them to come to the HPC early in the process to have a collaborative discussion on uh, some of the ideas and concepts that they are uh, discussing uh, to improve the site. And so uh, though this isn't a formal item and we're not making any formal actions or requesting any formal action from the HPC, we're, we're looking at this as an opportunity for a collaborative dis discussion so that they can hear from the HPC uh, any insight, recommendations, approach, or ideas that you may have on the improvements they are uh, looking into and that they could ask you questions as well. And so uh, the applicant team as long, uh, alongside the ownership is here tonight uh, and they'll be providing a presentation that they'll be asking questions um, and feedback from, uh, from the HPC during the presentation. So with that, uh, I'll turn it over to the applicant team to introduce themselves along with the ownership uh, to the community and commence their presentation. Thank you. Um, quickly before you do that, um, is there is there a time limit on this? We have asked. Um, you know, ten, usually it's ten minutes. Yes, we we have asked the applicant team to keep their presentation to between ten and fifteen minutes. Uh, with the perfect, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Great. Uh, so, Bill, I would turn it over to you and and your team at this time. Thanks a bunch, Meta. Yeah, and and I would like in turn to uh, have Shashank Patel with Three Thorns Hospitality introduce himself uh, as representative of the owners group, the new owners group. Thank you so much, Bill. Shushant. Yeah, 
Yeah. Thank you for that. Uh, so Sean Patel here with Three Thrones Hospitality, um, representing the ownership group. Um, we're, we're really thrilled uh, to be here and appreciate everyone's time. So we're, we're excited to see what the uh, future of the Pure Body has to hold. Uh, with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to either Bill or, or Wendy um, with Page Architects. Great. Thank you, Sashan, and thank you uh, for this meeting and the, the chance to speak to you all tonight. The, the Page team is, is honored to be uh, hired by Sashant Patel and Three Thrones Hospitality to bring the vision for the revival of the Pierpont Inn to life. Our national firm was founded in 1898, and we have a rich history of working on projects with important existing structures and creating ground up projects with lasting importance to the community. I am Principal Wendy Dunham Tita, and I am joined by my colleagues in our San Francisco office leading project management, design, and delivery Bill Huey, Jessica Sager, and Noel Manarud. We will be leading the architectural design and coordinating consultants as we develop this exciting project. And one of those key consultants bringing their historic planning expertise is Paige and Turnbull. And I'll let Ruth Todd introduce her team. Hi, thanks. I appreciate that. Um, hi, my name is Ruth Todd. I'm the president of Paige and Turnbull. We are uh, an almost 50 year old um, planning and um, architecture firm. And we have throughout the entire history of our existence, um, not, eight, not since 1898, but um, since 1973, we've focused our practice on historic resources and projects within historic contexts. And so we're excited to join this team. It's a very interesting project. And we have just been um, brought on board to provide advice on how to move forward um, with the, the uh, a sensitive approach to the historic resources on site. Uh, so we have um, uh, done our homework. We've reviewed the previous reports that some of you have seen in the past. We agree with those and it's our job to take th those reports and add another level of detail that can help to advise the design team on how best to approach the, this, this particular project. So I'm in the San Francisco office and I'd like to introduce Flora Chu, who is a cultural resources planner in the Los Angeles office and she will be uh, leading the effort for our office. Thank you so much, Ruth. Our first trip to this beautiful site was in September of last year and the visit had multiple goals. The first was, of course, to tour the site, perhaps hear some ghosts, look in all the nooks and crannies of this really widely varied collection of structures and buildings. And another was really to have our first stakeholder meeting. We have a shared commitment with our client of engaging the community at all stages of the project. In that informal gathering, we were able to share our initial uh, impressions of the site our early research and our preliminary programming goals with council member Heitman, city manager, assistant city manager, and Ed Zaire, who's helped us coordinate this evening. We're exciting to excited to have this meeting with you all tonight and to share our commitment and as well as the conceptual design as it begins to take shape. And we look forward to your feedback and guidance in our next steps. So with that, who is driving this slideshow? Is that Bill or is that Netta? It, it's, it's us. If you just tell us next, we'll oh, agree to the you. next slide. You can actually advance two slides forward. Okay. To actually three. Thank you. So our initial steps in, in analyzing the site and really conceptualizing the project were to understand the context of the Pure Pont within the city of Ventura and how it knitted together other sites and features uh, within the city, including transportation, your great bike lanes, the pier, and those relationships to the coast. Next. In addition to that planning geography, we're looking at the artistic connections, the cultural connections, and all of those other kind of priorities of storytelling, which are very important to any hospitality project, especially a historic one. Next. 
Next. We definitely understand that, you know, this, this building didn't come about on in a single day. It actually was, was shaped by many forces from its sort of earliest ones to the very important highway that really cut through and, and you know, created that somewhat disconnection from the original site to the beach. And that brings us really to the timeline on the next slide, which is the beautiful history of how these buildings came about from our original 1910 structure to the, um, the Rose Cottages in, in a different location, but relocated to the, the wing buildings and the bluff building. And then that sale from the original owner to um, uh, from the current ownership. So within that context of understanding the city and the site and the culture and the buildings, we were also looking at the history of the brand on the next slide or two slides forward, I believe. Next. And one of the things that was so interesting to us about understanding the history of the brand is that it began, it began in a kind of quiet and somewhat discreet way. Um, you know, the Pierpont did not announce itself quite loudly, but was a, a rather kind of understated and, and uh, elegant brand. And then it became more exuberant, uh, became more celebratory of the coast. And occasionally uh, through all of its transitions and changes, it had moments of nostalgia and, and moments of, of kind of more and less character. But understanding that the history of the brand has also been something quite important to our team as we think about how we connect that story and narrative with all of the history of the buildings and the site. And with that, that's the sort of site in mind, I'm gonna hand it over to my colleague, Bill, and you can forward two more slides to where he will begin talking about our analysis. Yeah, thanks. Uh, my name is Bill Huey, I'm an architect in the San Francisco office with Paige. I've been with Paige about eight years. Um, and uh, I'll be a project manager for this project. Uh, super exciting to be working with this legacy property and, and uh, so important to the community. Um, the, uh, the site itself has significant constraints. You've got the highway, the, high, the attendant highway noise. Uh, you've got uh, connections. Uh, San Juan Boulevard is the pedestrian connections are improving. The bike lanes are improving. You guys are, are really, there's a lot happening there uh, that we want to connect back into. Um, and when we look, this is really uh, Shashant and Three Thrones is taking a new look at the entire property. So this is really a different project uh, to look at the entire, all of the buildings as a resort together um, and really knit them back together. Um, you can advance the slide. Thanks, Nada. Oh, oh next. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. One back. Step one, step one back. Thanks. Um, and so we, uh, we picking up the report, the reports that, that have been done by, by HRG and that Ruth and her team, Flora and her team are, are digging into, um, you know, Looking at the landmark properties, main, the main building in the 1950s flat, uh, are treating those as individual resources within the district. But then you have the contributing resources of the other structures on the pro on the on the property. Um, and uh, you know, one of our design challenges is really to uh, make this a unified property, a unified guest experience and how to make the most out of each building, uh, how to really kind of make each building sing, um, not just focusing all the energy on the main building or on any particular building, but really bringing them all uh, uh, up to that, uh, up to the, the level of, of refresh and, and, uh, uh, and providing an identity for the resort. So uh, next slide. Oh. Yeah, this time for real. Thanks. <laughs> so the uh, historic landscape assets as well need a uh, study. We're working with uh, Brightview, which is a, a well-established landscape uh, architecture firm, landscape design, um, and uh, understanding 
um, protected trees, protected uh, uh, vegetation, uh, uh, and, and and taking taking care to uh, have our project really. Uh, it's it's actually kind of easy on the site because there's so much natural beauty to begin with, uh, and we've it, it's really just making the most of what's what's there. That being said, the windstorms the other night were devastating to the property, and they have lost two of their four historic uh, coastal cypresses. Uh, so that was a real tragedy, and uh, it just underscores the need for a really comprehensive effort to protect what's there uh, and, and to, to, to move forward with a, a, a scheme that um, does its best to avoid that kind of, that kind of uh, unfortunate occurrence. Next slide. So um, one of the, as I said, one of the challenges of, of knitting the whole site together uh, involves uh, creating a continuity for the pedestrian experience, continuity for the guest experience, and not only guests, but um, uh, rest folks who are using the restaurant, folks who are attending weddings on site. Um, the, uh, over the decades, there have been changes to some of the buildings that start to create disconnections in that pedestrian uh, the, those pathways, the wayfinding through the site. Um, and so one of our tasks is going to be uh, fixing that. <laughs> uh, next slide, please. Um, so we've taken a, an initial steps into looking at uh, the historic resources on the site and the individual resources I mentioned before. Um, so you can advance to the next slide now that thanks. Um, in fact, yeah, this is a repeat of the diagram, but then two more slides. Uh, we, we dug into as much of the old documentation of the main building as possible that we could find to start to understand what had happened through the years and how there have been accretions to that building. Uh, some of which are uh, within a period of significance, some of which aren't. And, uh, and are there changes uh, that we can look at that will improve that building? Um, I wanna emphasize this slide is a first cut and does not have the benefit of Ruth's and Flora's expertise. Uh, this is uh, my own uh, slightly ham-fisted way of uh, looking at this building and saying, where can we uh, make the kind of uh, strategic changes uh, that really might elevate the, the building and be sensitive to its historic significance. Um, so there are items like the, uh, there's an almost continuous uh, uh, honeycomb trellis that's uh, all around the building. And it's, and it's uh, I think it needs, that trellis needs to be rethought. Uh, there are some, uh, uh, there's a laundry facility that is, was tacked onto the side, uh, maybe sometime in the 70s. That little piece needs to be rethought. There are some proposals that uh, will be coming to you uh, in a future uh, design package with, once we've done, as Ruth said, done our homework, and, and we've uh, taken a hard look at what is appropriate for this building, we'll come back to you guys. Uh, but you know, I just want to emphasize that we're undertaking this in good faith with, in the, in the first, with first steps to understand the, what's possible with this building and, 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 uh, and appropriate and respectful. Um, so next slide, please. Oh, thank you. And with that, I'm going to hand the baton to my colleague, Jess Sager. Uh, and uh, who's design director for the San Francisco office. Hi everyone, it's so wonderful to be able to uh, be with you this evening. As Bill mentioned, I'm design director in San Francisco. I've spent over two decades in the Bay Area practicing architecture um, in hospitality, worked on several 
key projects along the California coast. And it's really been such an honor and pleasure to be involved in this project to date. Um, we'd like to just run through some vignettes that we put together of some of the key moments of the buildings and really wanted to highlight some overall kind of design approaches to the architecture. Um, the, the intent here is to illustrate really the desire to um, rehabilitate the exterior. Um, we recognize that both from a planning and a, a, a three-dimensional perspective, a lot of the um, architectural issues we're trying to resolve are very complex in nature. Um, and we're very committed to resolving those in a collaborative way and excited to be engaged with Paige and Turnbull to then do a much deeper dive to understand what the original material, cladding materials were for these buildings and wanting to, again, rehabilitate those and refresh the interiors. This is really just an image to depict the kind of experience of what it could be like arriving at the main building. Um, we want to preserve the public use at the ground floor and then return the upper levels to a guest room only use. Next slide. This is the, um, the back side of, of the main building, a similar story here about rehabilitating the exterior. Next slide. Oh, that, yeah. Um, and as we transition to the East Wing, another um, important piece I'd like to, um, you know, convey here is our desire to really embrace and celebrate each of these buildings for the era in which they were built. Um, so, you know, there are going to be very unique characteristics to the main building and then distinctly unique characteristics of the East building, the West building that were built more mid-century, really relying on the ground plane as the, as the kind of grounding force that unifies the, res the resort together. Next slide. Um, East Wing, again, you know, wanting to do a much deeper dive to really understand what the original cladding materials are, but still embracing sort of the mid-century vernacular for this building, its original intent. Next slide. The East Wing remains as a sorry as a as as a guest room uses both on the ground floor and upper level, and preserving the pool as a use and its function. Um, this is transitioning to the Bluff Building at the terminus of the East Wing, maintaining those guest room uses. Um, we're considering at the ground floor where you have um, you know views onto the 50s flat to really have some um, some employee. Um, amenity spaces down there that provides um, employees with a daylight experience. Next slide. A West Wing, um, similar interest in doing a deeper dive into the exterior cladding, wanting to celebrate its, its era in the mid-century. Next slide. And the 50s flat is um, a really wonderful building. Um, this is the one that I think um, in terms of its use, we'd really like to reposition more so as a guest and community serving public use, considering um, deviating from the guest rooms that reside there currently, um, which don't really work um, adjacent to the freeway and trying to pivot the building in a way that um, brings is it just another opportunity to really unify the guests and bringing them together with the community. Um, so considering uses such as a bike rental or cafe at the ground level and uh, fitness and wellness up above. Next slide. And just a look and feel of what that looks like. Again, very committed to doing that deep dive with Paige and Turnbull to really look at um, 
you know, the original cladding and components of this building, there's been um, probably a lot layered over time. Next slide. That might be the last one. Oh, the cottages. How could I forget the cottages? Um, uh, these two, the cottages um, were built more in the 1920s. Um, we don't have a vignette of these buildings, but a very similar story about the architecture wanting to really celebrate those um, for the era in which they were built as well. Next slide. Yeah, and, this one and, is and so that that concludes our short little presentation. Um, and you know, one of the main reasons for coming to to present tonight was to solicit questions and concerns from the committee members um, to the extent you're ready or, or able, or there are things that are on your mind about this project. Um, we want to be as responsive as possible, as proactive as possible in um, understanding where your concerns are. Um, and and uh, uh, I, I, you know, it, it may be a little premature to, to solicit that and, and I completely understand, but but in any case, I wanted to to, uh, to do that nonetheless, to see if there are uh, things that folks who folks want to want to share. Okay, great, thank you. Um, so this is sort of an informal formal item in a way. Do we have other public comments on this staff, or are we able to close and just discuss and provide feedback? Chair Neil, we do have one public comment. Okay. Great, thank you. Um, so this is sort of an informal, formal item in a way. Do we have other public comments on the stack, or are we able to close? If and everyone could mute discuss, themselves, I think we are feedback. hearing feedback. Neil, we do have one public comment. Uh, we do have one public uh, comment from Cynthia Thompson. Ms. Thompson, you're able to unmute yourself and, and speak at this time. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay, perfect. All right. I'm really just here as a uh, to lend my support as a member of the public to this project. As most of you know, I have been the um, historian and archivist for the Pierpont property for the last 20 years, and I supplied um, the all of the historic material and uh, archival images. Um, for the Historic Resources Group report. And I've been working with Sashant and I just think it's a marvelous concept. Um, I think that it, I love the way it's an entire approach to the property. I think he's hired some of the best, best in the business, Paige and Paige and Turnbull. And I'm here just to lend my support. And that's it, that shouldn't take three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it did not, but thank you very much. You're very thank welcome. You. Appreci appreciate it. And Chair O'Neill, that is our okay, great. public speaker. Excellent. So I think we can close the public hearing and just, you know, it, it is a, you know, just an opportunity to provide feedback. So I think probably the best way to do it is just to go, you know, committee member by committee member and give any feedback you have, or if you have any questions, um, that's fine too. Um, but I, you know, I, don't, I think we should um, try to be expedient with our comments here. Um, so, uh, would anybody like to begin? Perhaps uh, Committee Member Houston. Uh, oh, Committee Member Muller raised his hand, so uh, if, if you don't mind. <laughs> okay, well, uh, thank you. And uh, it's really uh, impressive to see the, uh, the number of uh, applicant uh, people who have turned out, uh, all of the expertise that's been applied to this project and all of the effort that will go into it, uh, it's very heartening. Uh, the Pierpont uh, is Ventura's, uh, I think, one and only claim to understated elegance. And we wanna somehow do everything we can to support that. 
And it seems like the owners and, uh, you know, those who've worked uh, on this before uh, all have that, uh, you know, as the goal. So we may become uh, long-term friends on this, but at the same time, uh, when there's debate and discussion and perhaps disagreement, we have to understand that we're all working to the same thing. My, uh, my concern would be this, uh, just generally, uh, there was a lot of talk in the presentation about unity uh, and about, uh, you know, the way it uh, presents itself uh, uniformly to guests and visitors. Uh, and of course, that would be uh, a typical design goal for, for any resort or any kind of uh, uh, establishment like the Pierpont. Uh, but our uh, discussions in this committee on that property in the past have generally uh, been driven by distinctions of various levels. As you've undoubtedly uh, realized, this, this property is a concretion of uh, structures uh, from different eras. And so which one should be the focus? How should it be distinguished from one adjacent to it or added to it? Uh, th this has been the, a lot of our discussion. So in, in developing your design, um, it would probably be to our advantage in this committee if uh, architecturally the elements that can make a distinction between the 1910 to 1940 structure and the, and the later structures that have been accreted around it, which, you know, according to your page 26, I think of the report is, is what you want to surround this with and preserve the later, some of the later additions. Uh, we need to, uh, to make sure that uh, the original uh, character of the original building is somehow uh, identified and distinguished from uh, whatever else there is. And that is that somewhat at cross purposes to your goal of having a uniform presentation. So that's, that's my uh, uh, comment at this point. And of course, it's, it's very, very early, but uh, that'll be, I think, the, you know, kind of the context for our discussions in the future. Thank you. Uh, who would like to speak next? By raising a hand on the committee. Oh, committee member Mercer is next. You're muted, Dina. I'm afraid you're muted again. <laughs> You're muted. Here I go. There you go. All right. I was reviewing, um, you know, HPC uh, recommendations from a few years ago. Um, and I noted in the main building that the committee felt that the trellis was a um, defining feature and was going to be kept along with the vines. Um, and speaking of the vines, I think it was recommended that a historical um, landscape review be done. And I don't know if the um, firm that you hired, it sounds like they might have some historical expertise. I, I don't know. But I still feel that that is a significant defining feature of the main building and should remain the trellis, not the egg crate. <laughs> Um, but a trellis and looking back and seeing, well, what were the original, um, what's the original trellis look like? What kind of materials were used? And could you please um, clarify for me, when I was looking through um, with the East Wing and the West Wing and the Maddie Glickman house, were you proposing to use all of the same exterior materials with those? Is it okay to speak, yes. Ms. O'Neill? Yes, yeah, yeah. We, okay. we, yeah, the way staff okay. set this up oh. and also we could we can reopen it, but she, they set it up that we could ask questions of you, I believe, during this presentation as informal. We're not making any actionable um, decisions, Great. so please go ahead. Okay, terrific, thank you. Um, I think I, it's probably worth clarifying uh, a point. Our goal, I think, is in line with the the first two questions and comments, which were about cohesion. We believe that the site, the ground plane, the pathways are what are knitting together all of the different stories of these very distinctly different buildings. So we are completely in line with celebrating what is individual and characterful and unique about each of these structures. The cohesiveness comes from how the paths work together 
how a, a grandmother and a child can be walking on a path and not trip over some of the kind of other things that have happened to the landscaping over time. And, and you use the word, uh, I think, accretions. What very important part of our early analysis is really understanding what was important about those original structures and really studying the things that were kind of added to them in the, the 70s and the 80s and the 90s and really looking at the integrity of the things that have been added to those wonderful original structures. So that is a, a part of that study. In terms of the materiality, um, in the concept package, they're done with kind of an even hand, but as, as uh, Jessica was describing, our first step and goal with Page of Turnbull is really understanding what some of those original cladding materials were. There was uh, some consistency in the use of wood, but that has been inconsistently covered up over time through paint or other kinds of stone materials and, and other things. So part of our due diligence and homework is really understanding the exterior cladding materials and really looking at, at returning those buildings to, to having those. It is not uniformly wrapping them in the same wallpaper. <laughs> that is absolutely not the goal. Uh, but in an early concept package, we try not to get too particular. Uh, and so everything has a bit of a kind of even hand in the illustrations before we get that deep dive into doing our homework and, and really understanding what, what all those materials really should be. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That answers that question. Um, and the only other, so your record showed that the Maddie Glickman home, that the second story deck was replaced, but not necessarily from the original. The past paper, and I don't know for sure, but the past paperwork that I have, the notes that I looked through, is that they used the original building plans when they built that second story deck. So just a, he a heads up, that's, that's what I have in, in my paperwork here. Um, and we will work with, with Paige and Turnbull to make sure that we are really thoroughly working through all of those details and items. Okay. Um, yeah, because, let's see, yeah. Um, 2018, yeah, the... the we reviewed it and we had some, I don't know if you have a, a copy of those um, recommendations or not, but it includes main building and the Maddie Glickman home. We do have the, the report and uh, the land, historic landscape report, as well as the uh, report that was approved by this committee. Okay, the recommendations. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think the trellis and and clarifying the materials to try to make this pull this thing together. And I understand what you're trying to do. That's um, and I admire that. That that needs to be done. So more power to you. But materials, yeah, it, I think it's important to remain true to their era. That's all. Okay, thank you. Um, Committee member Houston or Vice Chair Prezel, who would like to speak? Uh, Vice Chair Prezel raised her hand, I guess. Okay, I'll jump in. Um, I just wanted to thank all of you for coming to present for us. Um, your materials were very impressive and it's clear to me that you are doing your homework. So I really appreciate that. Um, I've lived in Ventura for 10 years and I've tried to spend, spend time at the Pierpont and it, the site is so difficult to enjoy because of a lot of the uh, progressive change that's taken place on the site. So I am, for one, really excited about the work that you guys are planning to do there, and I'm definitely supportive of the project. I think that um, I heard a lot of the right buzzwords when you were giving your presentation about doing the research, relying on Page and Turnbull, relying on the existing reporting and also building on that. Um, and I think that's really the most the most important thing that you can do. The fact that you've brought somebody in that has that expertise is going to be major. And um, I do agree with Dina in terms of the materials. And but I, I do think as long as you do your research and rely on um, what you have and build on what you have already, then I think, you know, 
it's a, it's an undertaking for this property. So I'm excited for it and supportive. Thanks. Any member Houston? Thank you. Um, I too am very supportive and was really glad to see, um, and I can tell through the presentation that we reviewed before you went through it, um, that you went back to all the materials that HPC had reviewed in the past. And I think member Mercer and I are probably the only two on the committee now that were part of the group in 2018 that actually had a site visit and walked around the site and looked at each of the buildings individually and looked at the historical information to try to determine, okay, which of these, um, if we look at this as a historic district or complex, which of these are contributing and what are their character defining features? And that was a major undertaking. <laughs> and so I, I wouldn't want to see you have to redo the whole thing. Uh, but it really kind of does require a site visit to get through um, to understand how the whole site fits together. And it is complex. And I'm I'm really happy to see that you're looking at the circulation and, and how to make the spaces work together um, and with each other. It, uh, it definitely needs that. Um, my, probably my concerns have to do with the, the pages that followed your presentation um, in our staff report, or not our staff report, but the report that was given to us. Um, and again, about the materials of the 50s buildings. Um, since it said that you wanted to replace the exterior materials. So uh, that's sort of against the, <laughs> the secretary's standards, but depends on um, what, your, what the condition of those materials is and whether they're original or not original. Um, what else? And then I guess my other main concern would be the approach to the to the main building. Um, and as Member Mercer said, the the overhang or the trellis is something that um, I think we felt was character defining, and it looks like it was part of the historic period, maybe not original but historic. Um, so I'd want to see again what you what you're doing there. We have a. We have a visitor. <laughs> um, and I was very glad to see that Paige and Turnbull is the, um, is the historic preservation consultant on this. And hi, Ruth. <laughs> so that's all I have to say. If I may, I just want to address one piece of that concern regarding the materials. I think that when we use the term replace, um, it's replaced potentially dry rotted or damaged or material that might have termites or other kinds of, um, of degradation and that we would replace it with something that was in the spirit or was like the, the material that was there before. So just want to make sure that well, we are contemplating making that building healthier. It's really looking at what should that material be um, and replacing it with the right material. I actually had a question um, too. It was more about the landscaping because one of the, the drawings in there um, seemed to indicate that you want to get rid of the ficus trees in the front. And I do remember as member Mercer said that we had recommended that there be some sort of historic landscape study because it wasn't clear at the uh, two years ago what vegetation on the property was historic and what wasn't. And it seems like you're saying that those ficus trees are not um, historic, but they, another, I, another thing I think you're gonna have to consider, and I think um, Cynthia Thompson will bring this up, is that the community, it's kind of a community resource and what the community is really used to seeing there. So if you made dramatic changes to the entrance and um, that, that whole entryway, um, you're gonna get a lot of feedback. <laughs> 
Well, fortunately or unfortunately, uh, Mother Nature has has had an opinion about one of those trees this week. Um, and so that is something that Sashant is having to deal with from, from the wind damage. But there definitely was a historic landscape report and we are following the guidelines of that report and Brightview, which is a fantastic landscape architecture and design group is um, our partner in that. And they are definitely, they have also read through and are, are incorporating the analysis of that report into the design. Did that include the vines? I'm curious. It, it does actually include the vines and, and in their opinion, you know, certain, well, all plants kind of have a, a life cycle and the health of that vine at the moment, the, that is something that they want to analyze is the health of that vine and the power of plants to deconstruct architecture, especially wood framing. And so they are analyzing the health and longevity, the long-term health and longevity of that vine. Um, and then also looking at the power of the growth of that and how it is pulling apart certain pieces of the building and really trying to, as I mentioned, kind of looking at the health of all of those pieces and how we can make sure that we both honor the, the history and of that fabric, but also make sure that it has longevity. Uh, so it, it may be that certain things have to get replaced with a like plant and, and some of those vines can grow. If it looks like it's at the end of its life, then it may be something that we come back and uh, show the analysis of the health of that plant and, and propose possible some, some similar replacement. That'll all be part of the analysis. Okay. I guess curiosity, I, I'm wondering why you chose the front entrance for a wine garden rather than the rear of the building? <laughs> that actually has to do with the highway um, okay. and the sound and the fact that that beautiful building provides a fantastic acoustic buffer for the sound of the highway. And actually, as we were standing on the site, standing at that front door, looking back at the mountains, we realized that it, it sounded wonderful. You could hold a conversation. We weren't dealing with some of the acoustic interference that that highway provided on the lawn and some of the other event spaces. And it actually felt like there was this kind of jewel that because the earliest circulation was at the front had not been fully realized and that using that beautiful building as the backdrop to an occupied space to be able to sit and really look at the building felt like a missed opportunity when it was only a driveway, especially when you could kind of look back at the hills and look at the building and, and kind of be, you know, underneath that, um, that trellis. So was really looking at how to kind of maximize the beauty of the building as an experience and also enjoy the quiet that it provided. Sounds wonderful. I might go there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, now the we all wanted to hang out in that <laughs> spot. Now the drive you were talking about, um, I can't remember what the pictures looked like, but are you moving the drive into the uh, parking lot area? Is that what you're proposing? That parking lot actually has some very generous drive aisles and we felt like from a circulation standpoint that we wouldn't lose parking but could do some shifting of that drive. So it will actually happen very close to where it happens but it will just get moved out a bit. And that's part of work, the work with Brightview, our landscape architect, as well as our civil engineer to make sure that we're kind of re reanalyzing all of that circulation and flow. So conceptually, there'll still be the same some type of arc, but it will shift in a, to allow for the wine garden in front. Thanks. Are there any additional comments from members of the committee? Okay. Um, I will just summarize. I didn't provide my comments yet, but this has been, I think, a helpful discussion for everyone um, to give some preliminary feedback on things that the committee will be looking out for in the future and things that the community will be concerned with in the future. Um, so hopefully that's been beneficial to the project team. I'm most happy that this is a holistic approach to the site. The only thing since I've been on the committee that I've seen for the end has been felt a lot more piecemeal than what we're seeing now is the comprehensive approach to the property, which is really what it needs, even though it is from multiple eras and different styles and 
a bit of a hodgepodge and there's not great circulation now what it that's why it needs what you're doing now this comprehensive approach so i'm really happy that um that it's, it the, the the property's going in this direction i think it's great um it's got so much untapped potential and it seems like you're setting yourself up appropriately to tap it um I had some questions originally. I think some of them have been answered through the discussion with the other committee members, and some of them are probably just too preliminary. So I'm not going to spend time on them tonight. Um, I did have a, a recommendation that you, in the package we received, it was that there, you were considering hiring Paige and Turnbull uh, to be engaged in the project, and I see them here tonight. So you've already taken my recommendation. So good job on that. <laughs> I'm happy to see the full project team. And everybody, you know, getting started working more together because some of my questions echo some of the previous committee members' questions about cladding and some of the landscape details and things like that. It sounds like they're committed to resolving those as a team. Um, so that's, I, I really don't have any very substantive feedback to add than what's already been presented. I just hope you continue with a holistic approach, um, you know, looking at everything, the site as a whole, and rather than breaking off pieces here and there. Um, but other than that, um, great project and really exciting. So um, I think that's probably all we have to offer tonight, unless anybody raises their hand as anything else to add. Um, Wendy, did you like to just make a statement? Well, first of all, thank you so much for your time and your questions. It, that insight into what you're interested in and concerned about is really what we were hoping to achieve this evening. So this has been really productive uh, in, in your guidance for, the, for now. I think one thing we do want to make sure that we are in sync on, as you mentioned, this holistic approach is the any kind of cadence or goals that you have for how this team engages this committee um, in terms of future uh, stakeholder review, feedback, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, sure. So I think um, generally, you know, the, the earlier you, we get involved, the, usually the better, the smoother the subsequent hearings will go. So it's great to see you all here now to start the conversation. Um, I would say, you know, it's not necessary, in my opinion, to come back until, you know, there's um, more concrete things to react to, um, rather than, because otherwise, it, you know, you present too many very conceptual things and you're going to get maybe maybe some negative feedback that's not even necessary the project will change so um that that's my recommendation is to come back when you have you know more like true schematic plans for the project um anyone else can chime in if they think there's need to come back sooner but i don't see any at this point no i think it's looking good yeah uh, so hopefully that helps Still vague, but um, some <laughs> some some strategy. Okay. Uh, committee member Perzel. I was just going to say I would probably feel differently if I didn't know that you had a preservation consultant, reputable preservation consultant involved. But since you do, I think you're going to get that input from them, and hopefully, then it'll come to us in a good place. Right. Agree. Okay. Well, I think that. Um, I think that wraps up this item. Yes, thank um, you. No formal action is, is necessary. Yes, yes, Chair Neil, if I may just add, I just uh, want to thank Mr. Patel for uh, being willing to collaborate with the city and coming early on in the process to engage both the city and uh, this committee, as well as Bill and Wendy and your entire team. Thank you so much for taking the time to come and have the discussions both uh, with uh, city staff and you have engaged in, in many stakeholder meetings outside of that as well. And we're just appreciative of um, you taking the time to um, do this right and do this well. So thank you. And we'll continue to work with you in setting those dates up and moving this forward um, at, at the pace you guys are prepared to do so. So thank you again. Thank you, Nita. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank okay, you. bye. bye. To Thanks you. a lot. Back, back to our agenda. Um, next item is just simply staff communication. Do we have any communications from staff or any communications from committee members to report? I, I do it from staff's perspective if there's no communication from the committee.
Um, do we have any update on applicants to fill um, committee members Houston's position? Has uh, there been any application? Have there been any applications? No, there has not. Uh, committee member Houston did okay. inquire about that earlier. Uh, we'll let the committee know if there are um, any, but until now, uh, committee member Houston stuck with us. We're, we're glad okay. to have you. <laughs> That's good for us. I just don't want to miss an opportunity to honor her at a meeting if, if uh, you know, I don't want to find out like two days before that she's been replaced. So if you could just keep us in the loop, that'd be great. We sure um, will. Um, and okay. then I, I do want to just give a quick update on, um, we did uh, have an item that went before DRC last night. If, the, if any committee members have heard, there's a conceptual design proposal for a site uh, for a new mixed use building at 701 Santa Clara. There is an existing building on site that will require a uh, stork analysis. And just um, since it was discussed at the DRC meeting last night, wanna make sure the committee is also aware that um, before the project moves forward with any type of formal application, that it will come to the HPC uh, for discussion on of the existing building. Just wanted to make sure the committee is aware in case um, there's any conversations or questions you get asked about that site, uh, again, 701 Santa Clara, that, that will come um, for you for review and they are preparing a his, historic resource analysis of that site, uh, the applicant team is. So just wanted the committee to be aware of that. Um, okay. And then uh, for upcoming, I'm sorry, Chair O'Neill. Oh, wanted, never mind. I was gonna ask a question, but that's, never mind. it's fine. Uh, I just had one other update on uh, future hearings just to prepare the Historic Preservation Committee. Um, there are uh, two calendared meetings, February 4th and February 18th. Uh, we will be canceling the February 4th, but we will be holding the February 18th. We do have an item for review by the HPC. But that's okay, great. all I have. Okay, um, the committee members have questions. Uh, uh, committee member Houston. Do we have an update on the survey? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Uh, Is there any an update on the survey? Oh, uh, they are still um, slowly but surely uh, working on the background and gathering, um, doing the, the, the site inventory and gathering the analysis and the draft context statement. Um, they are working on that in collaboration with Ramey and Associates, which is the larger consultant team that's working on the general plan update. Um, so we will be coming at a future meeting to, to discuss the context statement, but right now they're just inventorying and surveying the entire site, a lot of background analysis. Um, and by site, I mean the entire city. Any other questions with staff or announcements? from committee members. Okay, um, then I guess the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everybody. See you next month. Have a good night. Thank you.